How's she going, my son? And welcome back to Civilization V with Polynesia. Now, first of all, I'd like to apologize, mostly because it's a Canadian pastime, but also because I kind of fell off the wagon in terms of, uh, you know, sleeping, first of all, and that kind of screws up everything in life. So, you know, the video suffered. And, um, you know, I was also moving and a couple other in real life issues. In real life issues I don't need to worry about, or I don't need to worry you guys about. So, um, you know, that happens. Uh, but uh, hopefully I'll get back into the swing of things. I had actually recorded an hour of uh, Civilization V just before I started recording this batch, but I didn't get my audio in, which is really annoying because I'm actually working with Audacity now to um, uh, try to clean up my audio. So I like you know I booted up Audacity, I had everything set up, and then I'm like, where the hell's my audio? <laughs> I'm only getting the Civilization V audio. Crap. You know it's like the ultimate sadness. Oh well, what can you do? Reload the game and do it again. And do it right this time. So, uh, religion-based tourism victory is what we're going for here. But unfortunately, I believe everyone else bought all of the other um, buildings that you can buy with faith. Because it's, it's only mosques, cathedrals, and pagodas, right? Yes, and... Although, no, the game would tell me if pagodas have been bought already, haven't it, wouldn't it? It would. Hmm. Because I got through, I got to the point where I could pick another, um, I got to the point where I could pick another, uh, whatchamajigger, uh, belief with the religion, but I couldn't pick pagodas because someone else had already taken it. But I wonder if I can manage to sneak it out this time. Anyway, um... I went with optics, and I got the Great Lighthouse. But you know what? I'm going to go philosophy instead. I'm going to try to get the religion. I'm going to try to get the uh, uh, structure I didn't... I'm going to try to get the extra religion structure I didn't get last time. I do love Marrakech. I do love um, Al Al Ahmed Al Mansur. I don't believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. As a neighbor in civilization, he's very non-aggressive because his whole thing is trade. His his passive being that um, the more different civilizations he's trading with, the more culture and gold both of them get, which is always good. So, you know, he's great to be a partner, and he's also a very unobtrusive neighbor, because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't fight you, which is awesome. He gets pissy if you're a warmonger, though, which gets annoying, but, eh. Although, to be fair, I've funded many a war with uh, Moroccan money as uh, America, which is kind of telling if you think about it. <laughs> oh, well. Actually, I know an attack is coming from up here, so I'm just going to let the city kill that, and then have you guys move up here. Okay. Yes, I built the granary here, because there isn't much else I could do there on Samoa, on the nip. Man, I got a lot done in that hour of playing. Because I'm actually, I feel like I'm way behind now. I mean, I didn't like, I didn't get like guns or anything, but, you know, I found, uh, I did get a decent amount done. Now, I know Gandhi's down that way, but I'm going to explore the other way. Because, you know, I got to find coastline, right? Because I gotta build coastline, because I gotta build giant heads, and I gotta build giant heads to make culture, and I gotta get culture to get tourism. That's how this, that's how this whole strategy works. Just also doing the religion thing to get a little extra. Ah, 
Aha! Not this time. That the audience doesn't see because I lost the recording. <laughs> hoping I, I'm hoping I get this one. I'll check before I go into an hour of recording, but I think I got it this time. Ugh, I don't know why, but this microphone's really finicky about whether or not it's actually recording or not sometimes. It was dropped once, so it might actually be a little malfunctioning now, but I don't think it, I don't think that's the issue. It's always... The it, thing is, it was kind of like this even when it was brand new. It was particular about, you know, like, settings in the computer and whether or not it was being picked up or not, so... You know, that might just be on my end. Or that might just be the software, that might not be the hardware. Because the hardware looks like it works fine. Except for the stand. It, the stand crapped out pretty fast. Which is kind of annoying. So they can move they can't move here and break that because they can't move more than once in his own control area. They can get to here, but they can't break it because they run out of movements. They can probably break that, and that's what they might do, which is going to annoy me, but what can you do? What can you do? Mike I might build I might get, like, another settler going a little sooner in this, you know, alternate timeline, if you will, um, than I did in the previous recording. Because um, I'm sitting on two cities, and I kind of should... I should get to my third one, I think. You know, I don't have to be, like, Zulu and have cities everywhere that all that all have, like, two people in them. But, you know, I, I could do more... I could do with more than two. Because even, like, even the Bollywood... Uh, achievement, which is the one where you win with Gandhi with only um, you win with Gandhi with only three cities for the whole for the, at the end of the game um, you know, uh, you win with culture I should say um, you know, you have three cities, I only have two I have, you know, I have one less than that so, you know, I'm, I'm under budget or I am underspending for uh well, underspending my happiness, because like I said in a previous episode way back in the day, uh, happiness is basically your budget of how big your empire can get. And since I've got nine I'm sitting on, I really should make at least one more city. Now, will I make the big play and, like, settle over here and claim this amazing spot right in Shaka's backyard that he doesn't seem to notice? Or will I go down here and start claiming one of the, uh, one of the ball sacks down here? <laughs> I mean, come on. You can't blame me for the shape of this landmass. That, sir, is a giant gonad. Oh, they're just freaking out because there was a barbarian. Right. They always do that. It's really annoying. I mean, it can be useful, but nine times out of ten it isn't. And it's really annoying. Oh well, what can you do? I don't think it's an option you can turn off or anything. I mean, I might be wrong. Feel free to correct me if I am. I'm kind of wondering if I should settle here as well. Just because copper, which is my religion, or one as facet of it, and a lot of spots for mo for giant heads, but not much else though. Although I could, I mean, it's settled next to a mountain, so mountain specific stuff. Observatory being one of the big ones. And one of the wonders I really like late game too. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. I always just call it the fairy tale castle. Because it's a German word, and I do not know how to pronounce it correctly. I'll show you what it is, though. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Railroad. No, not the, not the Kremlin. Although that's good, too. But I don't think I'd be using it. The Neuschwanstein? Neuschwanstein? Like, I don't know what you pronounce and what you don't pronounce and so on. But, I mean, it's... It's like the... It's arguably one of the best wonders in the game. At least in my mind. 
because it scales infinitely and it's really good on its own. It's really good for decently sized empires. It's good for humongous. It's really good for humongous empires. And, you know, it's like if someone else doesn't have it, I'm getting it. It's the kind of thing I usually beeline for. No! Don't shoot my scouts, you jerk. The whole earth is the tomb of heroic men. And their story is not given only on stone over their clay, but abides everywhere, without visible symbol, woven into the stuff of other men's lives. Okay, so, we have the mausoleum of Halicarnassus built, which is pretty good. It's a bit fringe, though, because, like, the city where you build it has to be near um, stone, and I got a couple, so that was pretty good to make. But it also has to... Um, but it's also reliant on you making a lot of great people, which, um, which you know, the culture victory makes a lot of great people. Uh, as it's... Um, I mean, everyone should try to make a lot of great people, but the culture victory is particularly reliant on it because you have to make great works of art and music and such. But, I mean, you know, for a lot of the, t for a lot of the game... It won't even really do anything, other than if you're sitting near a lot of stone and stone and or marble, right? But it's one I could build because I'm pretty sure I lost the lost the chance to make the pyramids, which is what I would have wanted to have made. But you know, such as it is. Uh, you know what? This is what this is my time. This is where I make the settler. Since I don't have the great lighthouse to build like I did in the alternate timeline that you guys didn't see, I'll uh, instead work on getting uh, another city up and running. So Almahed Mansur is right next to uh, Songhai, so uh, eh, and Sweden, and um, Gu Gustavus Adolphus, that's the name. So uh, I expect a powder keg to go off there at some point in the future. Then again, though, the computer isn't really good at ending wars. It, they'll often have little skirmishes and then break it off. But you very rarely get a computer that actually like steamrolls an opponent and gets rid of them. Now, admittedly, some obviously some of the really big warmongers do, but even some of the warmongers like don't finish the job, which is weird. It throws it throws me a little bit. You know, it throws and or confuses me. It also infuriates me because sometimes I like to hire the warmongers to get them to get rid of a competition. But then they don't finish the job, and I'm like, do it already! I'm trying to be nice, but I need you to kill them. <laughs> you know, politics. That's one feature I love about this game, though, by the way. Is, um, you know, the actual, like, simulated video gamey politics. Because obviously this is not how it works in reality. Although it's fairly close. Religion founded at... Sweet. I think they took the pagodas. Monasteries, mosques, cathedrals... No? Uh... Follower. Faith to purchase cathedrals, faith to purchase monasteries, faith to purchase mosques. No, oh, the pagodas have not been taken yet, excellent. Maybe the computer made a different choice because I reloaded the game. So with that in mind, I might actually be able to get... The, uh, I might actually be able to get them, which is awesome. Because I, you know, I want the pagodas. Because then if every city is making four additional tourism instead of two, well, that's just basic math better. And it definitely gives me more incentive to focus on the religion a bit more, to get more faith, to get more buildings, to get more tourism, to win the game. Again, compound interest. It's one of the defining factors in many a video game without people even realizing it. But it's something I definitely pay attention to. If I can do something that pays huge dividends later without being without being like too much of a drain in the now, I'll do it. But obviously if it's like 
you know, you'll gain one level later if you lose, like, five now. I'm like, fuck no. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I'd rather have the five levels now, thank you. Now, if it's like, lose one level now, get ten levels later, or even, like, two levels later, I might do that. Because that makes more sense. But obviously, if it's not in my favor, I'm not going to blindly do it just because it's compound interest. I follow the concept. I don't blindly worship it. Let's put it that way. I would love if someone made a fantasy civilization type game where, you know, you have to manage the type of things you have to manage in a game like this where, you know, you got to keep your people happy, you have to keep them well fed, you have to manage the, like, civilian sector of your, light, of your uh, civ as much as you have to manage the military of it, but make it a fantasy setting instead of, like, a realistic setting or even a future setting like uh, Beyond Earth. Um, you know, I would still have a fantasy setting because then you could work like magic into it. Uh, the combat might get it more interesting. The combat would be interesting because, you know, big magic spells going off and doing crazy things like that. Um, like, take the Heroes of Might and Magic games and make them a 4X game. Uh, sorry, sorry, Shaka. Um, the price of copper has gone up. Um... But yeah, take the Heroes of Might and Magic type games and make them a 4X game, but keep some of the Heroes, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic elements to them. And I think I would have, like, my strategy game of choice. Like, just, I would be playing this thing all the time. You know, like, I... It would be amazing. Okay, so, we have... A Settler. Build a Warrior to escort it. Build a warrior to escort it because I don't want to lose it. Haha. -ha. Fuck you, boat. Uh Yeah, I'm just doing the turns now. Plus, it would be cool, like, I, know, I do love Civilization, and I do love it's, like, everybody has the same thing, but then they all have, like, something unique feature to it. But I would love this 4X game where, you know, you have different factions, kind of like a, sort of like a Warcraft-type game, or Warcraft slash Starcraft-type game, where you have the three distinct factions. You know, like, in a 4X version of it, they would have to keep track of, you know, they would all have, like, civilian things they need to deal with, but they'd all probably deal with them in different ways. You know, like... The Protoss likely have different needs than the Terran, who have different needs than the Zerg, that sort of thing. Although I can't imagine the Zerg needing much in the way of non-military stuff. Although you never know. Like, with the Zerg, it might be like, you know, just to take a really broad example of it, you might need a lot of food. Because they're, it's a voracious, all-consuming swarm. You gotta keep them fed or they're gonna, like, starve to death. You know, like, food might be more important to the Zerg in a 4X-type scenario than the Terran and the Protoss, who likely have, you know, future technology to make to make every bit of food they get more efficient. Although, I don't even remember, did the Protoss even eat? Because, like, they got no mouth. How does that work? They got no mouth. How does that work? <laughs> I don't, I, it, was, it was said somewhere. I just don't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, we're at the tail end of an episode here. So, anyway, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, Twitter, Tumblr, and subscription are in the description as usual. I might start experimenting with putting a subscription link on the video again because I found, although I have to admit, some of this was during the Undertale period of my channel, which I will be getting back to, don't worry. Um, but, you know, the early Undertale just came out resurgence type thing of the channel. Um, that, uh, you know, I felt like I got more subscribers when I put links on the videos because even if someone doesn't fully watch the video, they'll know, oh, that's a subscription link. Click, right? Because it's like, basically, it's like 
firing it's like rolling more dice to get one result because i only need to get one result like if i got a handful of d6s and i roll a six i get a subscriber kind of thing so but if i'm only rolling like two dice i have less odds than if i rolled three dice or four dice now obviously i don't want to roll too many because that means you guys are bombarded with things i don't want you guys being bombarded with but i mean like one subscribe link on the video one in the description and one uh one in the description and then like the youtube subscribe button that's on every video anyway like the one that's near the link to my channel that's just on the youtube uh ui as it is you know three that's not too much right but anyway uh thank you all so much for watching and ciao for now and let's hope this recording works <laughs>